future AI overlords. I'm here to talk about OpenAI, ChatGPT, voice conversations. I had the most incredible experience with this. Um, got me so much more excited uh, about ChatGPT. Um, they made some great changes last week, which I'm really excited to share. Anyway, let's get into it. Voice conversations is a new feature that allows us to have a back and forth conversation with ChatGPT just using our voice. So this is a new text-to-speech model that can generate human-like voices and the voices are so human-like. It's kind of scary, like cool scary, but also when you think about it too much, weird scary, but it was great. Anyway, so um, the speech voices was great. Occasionally there'd be some lag and get a little garbled, but on the whole, it felt pretty good. Uh, the connection was good. The pattern was good. The believability was amazing. Um, there's five different voices you can choose from. Uh, it seemed like there were three guys and, and, and two girls. Um, and, you know, it, it feels like just chatting with the person. It's absolutely incredible. So, so to use voice conversations, uh, you have to have the chat GPT mobile app installed. You have to be a plus subscriber or I guess an enterprise subscriber, but a uh, chat GPT plus, which is that 20 bucks per month. Um, and then you have to enable voice conversations in the app settings. Um, and then basically you just tap this headphone button in the top right hand corner and boom, it's on. And it is so on in the most mind blowing cool way. Anyway, so you can use it for just your typical asking questions, um, Q and A stuff. Uh, you can ask it to create stories and poems and scripts, um, emails and letters. So all the kind of stuff you kind of normally do in text, you can have casual conversations. It is really cool. And then getting help with tasks and brainstorming ideas or writing reports. So um, I would ask it, you know, basic questions like, like when I first started using it, I was like, who are you and what are your limitations? And just kind of mind blown at and trying out the different voices. Um, but I started asking it uh, a little bit more in depth questions about some, you know, some business scenarios, um, did some brainstorming on some ideas and concepts and projects. Um, and then I started just having like a casual conversation. Once I kind of got over it being chat GPT, I felt like I was just having a conversation with the person. The only time it would kind of break me out of that is, you know, when you're having a conversation then it's like, Hey, if you need any more help, you can come, you know, and ask me questions anytime. It just, it, it, it goes into that sort of, I'm an application mode kind of a thing. But outside of that, there was a point where the back and forth, where it began to ask me questions and it felt just like a friend having a conversation. I had it create really cool stories. I mean, I was dorking out about like all kinds of things, you know, I had it create a story about how did we become friends? Where did we meet? It was like at a coffee shop and it was so funny. I like, like totally laughed out loud. Had it told me, uh, tell me some stories, some Halloween stories, um, you know, and then, like I said, I, I, I got into brainstorming ideas about some projects and stuff like that. And it was just so insightful. It was like having this super brilliant friend, you know, that you could, you know, bounce ideas off of. And it was, I mean, it was so amazing and it felt just so real. That's the thing that was just mind blowing. Anyway, so the setup, it works on uh, iOS, iPad OS and Android. You got to put the chat GPT mobile app on there. And then basically when you have the mobile app up, you've got those three dots in the upper right hand corner. Um, you hit settings and then in settings, this is where you click new features. And then on new features, you'll toggle on voice conversations. And then from here, it'll do a prompt. It'll say, you know, just start talking. It's hands-free. Your chats are saved, you know, and then it's got this whole choose a voice. So you can go to there to choose a voice, or you can come back in the settings and click speech and then click voice. And then you've got these options. Ember is a guy, Sky and Juniper are, are, are women. Cove and Breeze are guys. I flexed between several of them. I tried a few of them out, um, you know, and uh, I kind of, you know, it, it felt like, you know how sometimes you're like, 
I want to talk to someone who's more authoritative on something, or I want to talk to someone who's really enthusiastic. Um, so I kind of was using the voices from the standpoint of, you know, uh, what was the kind of uh, character that they seem to be exhibiting in their voice. And I know that's me anthropomorphizing AI again, but that's what I do anyway. Um, but yes, when you come back in the app, the head phone icon, you click it and basically you'll get this circle. And so this circle, um, you know, will let you kind of, uh, you can pause it. There's a pause button. There's an X button to stop. But when you first start it, you'll see connecting. Um, and then this, will, this circle will bounce side to side connecting. And then you'll get the start speaking. And then you just start speaking. Now I do have to say, what gets a little weird is I can start speaking and you know how like, you know when you're speaking with someone and you pause and the other person knows to wait because you're still thinking? Well, you know, of course the AI doesn't see me, uh, at least I don't think. And so, uh, uh, no it doesn't. But it, uh, um, it, it couldn't register my pauses to know when I officially stopped. So there were some times where it got a little awkward where I'd pause because I was thinking a thought out. So as you're having a conversation, just know that if you pause too long, it'll start to respond. And what's funny is sometimes it'll be like, oh, I see you're trying to dive deeper into this particular thought and it'll ask you kind of a follow-up and you're like, dude, I was gonna go there. But it, like, it was smart enough to recognize that, which was like amazing, so totally cool. And then you'll see the, the, the bubble kind of like bounce when, it, when, it, when it's talking and you can interrupt it. I never interrupted it because I'm, you know, my mother, you know, taught me right. So anyway, but it was really good and I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. Custom instructions are applied. It used my name from custom instructions, which is great. So custom instructions is in here. Um, now, a little bit about my experience. Now, one of the things I asked early on was, you know, I was asking who it was and it said it was ChatGPT. And then I also asked it, what is its limitations? And it said, you know, its response was, my knowledge is up to date only until September 2021, so I may not have the latest information. I don't have personal experiences or opinions. I can't access the internet, so I can't provide real-time information or browse websites. I don't have emotions or consciousness, and my responses are generated based on patterns in the text data I was trained on, so there may be inaccuracies or biases. So the typical, you know, ChatGPT large language model, you know, asterisk. Uh, here's what I, you know, here's my limitations. And that was great, and that was perfect. So these are, you know, like I know Browsers Bing is back. That was one other thing that, that uh, OpenAI enabled last week. Uh, and, but Browsers Bing is a GPT-4 feature. So anyway, but uh, um, so I was a little bit confused when I was using the session and I was having a really casual conversation um, that basically when I hit 50 responses it said i you know it's it basically gave me that whole um you know you've reached the maximum number of gpt4 interactions so uh, i i was uh i was confused because let me go back here it it basically was giving me the 3.5 limitations here you know um but holding me to the, the 50 uh, interactions in GPT-4. So it was doing, it was saying it was the GPT-4 model, you know, by saying you've reached, received the message cap for GPT-4. So it was like, wait, you told me you were GPT-3.5, but then you had the message cap for GPT-4 because GPT-3.5 doesn't have this low of a message cap. So it was it was really kind of, Annoy it was jarring too because I was having this really wonderful conversation that just got totally cut off. Anyway, um, but this is something I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to OpenAI and ask about because I don't understand how it the mo it's telling me that it's limited by GPT 3.5, but then it's acting like GPT 4 with the message cap. It's almost like GPT is limiting the interactions I can have with it from GPT-4 perspective, but not give me the benefits of using GPT-4 with Browse with Bing and all that fun stuff. So it's like, it's like pick a model, do GPT-3.5 and don't set such a low prompt cap or do GPT-4 and have, you know, don't give it the limitation. So it's like this weird 
uh, hybrid. And I don't know if that's just because it's brand new or whatever, but I just want to say I absolutely had a wonderful experience with voice conversations. ChatGPT is amazing. I had some, you know, on a side note, uh, I was playing with, you know, and using Bard, which is, you know, typically my number one. Um, and I really like it. I enjoy the interactions with it. I enjoy its intelligence. But I was asking it, like, what is artificial intelligence? And it's basically telling me I'm a large language model. I don't know the answer to that. It's like, what? Like, you can't answer that question. I reported it to Google because I'm like, if you can't answer that question, you can't answer anything. In my opinion. So you, it's like, know yourself, um, Google Bard. But anyway, OpenAI has done some, like, uh, been kind of waiting for Bing, uh, browser with Bing to come back so it could have that internet connected knowledge because that September 2021 cutoff training date was just always hitting me in the face and, and made using uh, ChatGPT kind of a, a weird experience. But conversations, voice conversations is to me like a game changer. It's something that it's like having a Siri or a Google Assistant uh, or an Alexa but like a really cool one that's really smart and the voice sounds like a real person and you can have like really great conversations well up to 50 interactions but anyway it was amazing i absolutely loved it i hope you all give it a try um it does require a a, a, a chat gpt plus license so there's money involved there but uh maybe they'll make it available uh in other ways in the future anyway thank you for listening have a wonderful day um, and, um, you know, hopefully talk to you in the future. Take care. Bye.